All right, hello everybody and welcome to our Monday li live lighting critique. Uh, for those that don't know, we have a lighting critique that I try and do every Monday and Friday. This is work, uh, the Monday critique is work posted by Academy of Animated Art lighting students over the weekend. And I am just gonna kind of go through them, uh, talk about some of the things that are working, some of the things that can be improved upon um, and go from there. We've got a lot of images, so I don't want to waste too much time. Um, but as you guys know, this I am uh, from the last couple of weeks, I am traveling at the moment. So if my lighting and sound is a little off, um, please forgive me, but uh, hopefully that's going well. Now, at, throughout this process, hello, oh, hey, Jordan and David. Um, throughout this process, if um, you have any questions at all, please feel free to add them in the comments window on Facebook. I will be able to, um, I'm gonna check that periodically. And then additionally, I will, uh, and then I'll be posting this to our YouTube channel and for our lighting students, this will be going on your page as well. So let's get into it. Okay, let's see, Jordan, you are here. And so let's go ahead and go with yours first. Get this, something out of the way there, all right. All right, so Jordan, we've got some submissions here from you. Uh, you had a question, uh, in your post about um, render times and how it was taking a while. So if if you haven't done lighting before, uh, the render times kind of go up exponentially and um, and, all, and but and I think that's what you were referring to. It may have been the playback on the screen, um, but it's one of those things that like it's really kind of hard to um, get a good sense of what's going on on your machine um, on, a, on an individual file if you're seeing it happen over multiple files uh, it could be a little easier to diagnose but just saying that it's feeling a little heavy um, it's hard to say what I but but all that to the point of what I like to do is I like to do diagnostic work which is um, I like to simplify things if I feel like a scene's gotten too heavy and rendering longer than it should I'll try to isolate components like maybe try rendering the whole thing without any shaders on um, or like all lights off no shaders, just a grayscale scene. If that renders quickly, then you go ahead and add the shaders and maybe one light. If that's rendering okay, then start adding the light individually and see and see where things start to bog down. Because then, like, you know, th there may be a light where you have a typo in the number of samples that, that you have, and that's really slowing things down. Um, and that can kind of identify itself that way. But it, it is a little bit tricky. It's more art than science on that to kind of get a feeling for it. But I hope I hope that's I hope that's a little bit helpful. So, um, okay, while I have you here, I'll talk about your two submissions here. So with this one, I think you can just go brighter with the, with the sphere as a whole, um, get a little bit more, you know, we talk about getting a little more rim light on there. I think you can kind of go up to like around that level with it. Um, the biggest thing is you don't want it to, uh, you want it to kind of stand out from the surroundings. Um, and, then, and then you may want to take down uh the the light over here um just a little bit just so we can kind of focus in on that so i mean we can even increase that brightness just a little bit there just to get 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 that sphere to pop off just a little bit more um and then we can really tone this down to kind of again center everything and focus in on that area it's good to have this idea of light coming and happening off screen but we we don't want it to be too distracting uh, in terms of your other image it's a um this is a very simplified character. Um, your, your light position is good. Um, we've got a light kind of coming in here, kind of scraping across. The problem is like we're not, there's not enough, well, two things. Number one, it's great to see some reference imagery on this stuff so we have an idea of what you're going for. Um, number two, there's just not enough light to fall, to dark fall off um, coming across. Like it just, he kind of stays overly lit overall. Um, and I think his arm, I'm sorry, his arm position here might be a little odd in that it's like, like we're seeing this crease along here and that's, and it's also kind of like follow, like kind of hitting the tangent of his face. If we could, if there's, if you can control that, if there's any way to like lower his arm down a little bit to kind of better frame his head. I think that would help. But the bigger thing is that we want to, we're, we're going to need a little bit more contrast on the dark sides here to really kind of feel this up. Um, you know, like this is gonna be crude, but like, we 
we just need to create some more um, dynamic lighting in there a little bit, just to kind of really kind of make them pop a little bit. And with the eyes, I think that like you want to make sure that because they look the eyes look pretty even in their tonality as well. You definitely want the the key side to be a little bit brighter than the fill side. I would also run if you can. Um, maybe a little ambient occlusion or something around the edge of the eyes just to get them to set back in. Right now they feel very um, like pasted on top. Additionally, just double check and make sure you don't have like low poly stuff because I can see some like hard edges in the shadows in here. Um, and then in terms of the skin tone, uh, take a little bit of the pink out of it, a little bit less red. And I think that'll, that'll help out a lot too. Okay, let's see if we've got anybody else there. Hi. <coughs> All right, so that, uh, Jordan, you're the only one with the submission from today, and I'm trying to keep up my idea of working back to front. Um, so we've got Tyler has a couple submissions here. We've got uh, his monster attack. And I think this is working a lot better. So you're rendering the, um, the full frame or the, the animation now, and I think it's really nice. So for you all that don't know, we are working on getting the character to emerging from the darkness and the bright. And I can, you can already kind of feel um, the scale a little bit better of, of the characters as he kind of moves through this space. I really like the saturation on this light here. I think that's looking really pretty in, in uh, contrast to that. And like you're getting the specular hits. What I would do is be adding um, uh, some bump to the specularity or, or just some bump overall, I should say, to kind of break up that specularity so it's not quite so smooth. So he doesn't feel like a balloon. He feels more like, you know, he's got some scales on his skin and stuff. Um, I think that I think that'll help a lot, but I think um, that'll be really good. And then I would up the amount of light hitting them at the end here. Uh, and then, yeah, and maybe isolate it more to this screen right side because, like, right now uh, in the final pose, the the light value from right to left is pretty similar. So maybe just getting this and a little bit more shadow and more poppiness on the light coming in there. But I think this is working out. Um, a lot, lot better. My only question is the orange um, spinies, <laughs> uh, the orange scales. I don't know what those are called. The stegosaurus things on his back. Um, they are, they're almost emitting their own light source, which is, so here's the thing. They're kind of on the borderline right now. They're bright, um, but they're not glowing. So it feels like they're, 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 they are their own light source but at the same time, they're not like illuminating anything around it. So I would either take those down to make them like, um, make them like, a, like a, they can be a bright orange um, tone, but like in their darkness, they would be, it would be darker than this. Um, or if, you, if, you're, if your intention is to make them like a glowing element, to really, to, to glow them up, to really make, you know, to feel some orange light, you know, kind of spilling, onto onto the body a little bit um and because that that'll and then we can we can always up the the glowiness in the comp um we can do that later but uh but yeah i think i think that's i think that's the way you want to go with that um your other submission here we've got the little uh boy and the snail uh, playing the grass i think I, I the translucency looks a lot better um in the grass we're not getting those super darks uh, overall, but we are still getting them down here. I would, st I would still continue to push that just a little bit more. Um, and then uh, there's, there's some very like overall the saturation just feels a little bit too strong. Like I would, I would, um, I was looking at these reds specifically, but I think overall, if we take it back a little bit, I think that'll, I think that really helps out a lot. Um, we can continue to pull it back in the in the reds, and then maybe in the the greens a little bit too. I'm trying to shift it a little, a little more yellow too. So something like this, and then with the boy, or the kid here, push a little bit more light, a little more contrast. Um. Yeah, something more in that tone. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, so again, to look at the, what we just did versus the original to give you an idea, to kind of recap what I just did while I was mumbling. <laughs> um, 
So less saturation overall, a little bit more brightness and pop on the character. Um, but the biggest thing is that we need to figure out a way to create some more shaping on this character. I am again, not totally feeling like there's a hat casting some shadow in there. It feels, um, it feels a little bit like we're, we're pushing, um, you know what it is? Cause you got the sunlight hitting there. So I guess that's all bounce light. It's really just, if you're, if you're using the bounce light, um, we really want it to kind of hit more on the screen, right side of the face than the left. And so really, I just kind of want the left side of the face to go into a little bit more darkness. Um, you know, like anything from the nose over uh, should be. And then watch out for the, the teeth should be a little whiter, the tongue should be a little less red. Um, I know I just did this the hand, but that looks a little better there. Um, you try and push some, like by increasing the contrast, we're able to get some more specularity on the skin. Uh, continue to, um, to push that. The other thing that you'll want to do is simplify the area around the snail because the snail's getting a little bit lost. Um, and I would do that by creating like um, a light blocker um, to block, to create a shadow behind the snail. Like, so all this stuff kind of goes in the shadow and then the light hitting the snail will kind of pop off because this is a really difficult read, right? It's getting this shape to read over like these complex grass shapes in the background there. Um, uh, but I think I think that'll be a good I think that'll be a good test and I think that'll be a good next step for you. But I well because overall this is looking a lot better. I think you can go brighter on the sky too. Definitely definitely make that brighter back there. Um, okay, so moving on we have a uh, shame. Yeah, so nice update. Definitely getting that top down light there. Um, the blue and the green are or blue and the green red and the green are looking uh, much much better. Um, I think maybe we can go if you if and you don't have to do this, but I would maybe try and push the saturation of the blue uh, a little more cyan, maybe a little bit and pushing the intensity just a little bit brighter because I can see like some of the values in here um, and here are just a little bit brighter than that. But the problem is if we push that, then it gets too flat because this is working out really well because like of all the contours in the face, it allows some of the areas to go darker. So, you know what, maybe don't push that right now, but just something to keep in mind for next time. So really great job with this one. Um, and I think you're good to move on from here. Uh, Jules, uh, we got the reference here from Tomb Raider, question mark, I think that's what we got. And uh, and your update here, okay. So those are your few other ones. Okay, so for Adam, I am, I'm liking Adam. I think the, again, the um, the saturation level on him can come down a little bit. He, his skin is feeling a little bit too saturated. Uh, if you look at, at this reference, there's actually a little more green um, in the scene overall. So maybe a little more green in the surroundings to get the, to get what uh, warm tones exist on him that to, to, to pop a little bit. I think we can soften the light that's that's shining him overall. Like I can definitely, I mean, it's fine that we have this kind of spot thing, um, but but it's the shadow quality like right in, you know, I can see like on the nose here and, and some of the areas, the shadows are just very, very crisp. So maybe increasing the radius of the light to soften those shadows. The only other thing would be the, the getting a little bit more hints at what's going on in the background over here. Um, I'll, like it, this feels a little bit spotlighty, a little bit super focused in on him. And it would be great. I mean, like, obviously that's what we want, but it would be great to get a little bit of, of um, light hitting some of the objects and the surroundings. Um, Cause I think that'll help communicate the space a little bit better, but yeah, it's looking good. Um, nice and simple, uh, pretty straightforward. The, the eye things, I would just swing them up top, but not, not a super big deal. Um, and then, oh, In terms of the, I think the rim light on the top can come down just a little bit in value, just like a little bit less. And then if it could also kind of creep over and maybe hit the ear a little bit, that would be dope too. Um, okay, so let's take a look at your other submission here. Much, much better on the colors. I think the fill area is a little bit dark. You can see here it's a, uh, it can come up just a little bit. Um, and actually the key side can come up a little bit too. So we can just take that. all of it up just a little from where we were. But I think the colors are, are much more spot on. 
um, than the last iteration. So I would just increase the fill value, uh, increase the key just a touch. And I think, I think they, then you'll be in a really good spot. And uh, wait, there's a little flicker of stuff on the back of them here. So maybe just if you need to, just like a little subtle rim as well. Oh, and the pants, uh, I would just take down the saturation on those. They're a little, a little super saturated there. Uh, but again, not a big deal. But yeah, good, good, uh, good progress on this. That's really, really looking good. Uh, so Jordan, okay, it's looking which. Let's go and check over. Okay, not seeing any comments here. So like I said, throw them in there if you got them. Uh, all right, so Eugene is up next. Uh, Eugene has is working with this animator on this shot, and it's looking really great. Um, I think I love the depth of field they're using. I think the scale is working really well. Um, good shaping. I love I love the construction of the light, the way that the light's uh, scraping across here and creating this uh, darkness back behind her that really helps frame her up, and I think that's working out really really well. Um, I feel like the city is feeling very matte. Um, like I'm not, I'm not feeling any sort of moisture or specularity on anything. It would be great to uh, pick that up a little bit more in the brick and some of the surroundings, just because it's 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 nice that it's dark back there and allowing her to pop, but it is kind of flattening out back there. Um, in terms of her, you're doing a really nice job of focusing the tension on her face, and you can see here that like. Her arms and torso and everything aren't quite as bright as her face, and I think that's working out really well. Um, I'm just wondering if the specularity couldn't be a little bit tighter. Um, it feels a little bit broad, and I would like to just kind of tighten it up, and especially a lot of light hitting there. And I would, I, it's just, I, I want to feel, you know, like there's, um, I guess it's because the skin is uh very smooth it, it's it's more about you know it is it's more about the bump than it is you know the actual specular value so i think i think the skin just needs some a little bit a touch of bump for like pores just to break up that specularity because it's it's feeling a little bit broad um and not like it's it's a skin it's it's feeling slightly differently than that but honestly other than that i think it's looking good i think possibly you might be able to take this fill down any value down just a touch and then, the, oh, and then the other thing would be when she's pointing with her finger, they seem, that seems like an important pose. Um, you could sneak in like, like a spotlight back here um, behind it just to kind of like, when she hits that pose, just to hit a little bit of a rim on it. I guess I did that rim on the wrong side, rim on this side, just to, just to make that pop, hand pop just a touch more. Um, and because of the positioning of things, you can actually just like, scream it past the rest of the scene by making a small spotlight that just fires in that region and, and, and you won't be able to pick it up anywhere else. So, um, but yeah, really good stuff. I would even, um, you could also possibly punch up her warm tones a little bit more. Let's do shots over there. Like in this, um, wondering if we can't just push her up a little bit warmer. To pop off that background. Let's see, I think I think yeah. I think I think just shifting it, just a little more red, a little more yellow, will help out a lot too. Donica, very cool stuff. Um, you worked on the axolotl for a long time, so I feel like you're ready for this challenge. I feel like you were born for this. Um, very cool stuff. Love the love the uh, octopus on the beach. Just make sure that we are feeling the heat and the intensity of that sunlight on the visor there. Uh, you, but like the structure is looking really good. Um, I think you can go a little brighter on the sky too, to really kind of be like sky, ocean, sand as being like three distinct regions. Um, yeah, really great stuff. The only other thing when you're, when you're building this up, I would just take this, um, plant and just kind of have it end above his head. So it's not quite cutting into him. Um, and actually you may not even need that. Cause like this stuff really frames like this frames this up well and this frames it up well you can even may even just like position it over here to kind of frame around the character its entirety but uh like love love the shaping overall you're gonna you're gonna have some good uh connection to the cards um yeah i'm just excited to see what this one looks like totally in 3d so good job there uh dari 
man, great stuff. Really, really beautiful. Like really hitting the tone and the mood of this character. Love the surroundings, love the set. Two things I would work on. Number one, slight bit more darkening um, in the character, just like a touch. And I know it's a little bit of a cheat, but the idea is we wanna get character to pop just a touch more from the surroundings. Um, and by, by getting his dark tones to be just like a shade darker, just like that much darker, um, we're able to focus the eye in on him just a little bit more. Even that might be a, too much, a bit too much, like somewhere in there. Just that like subtle shift. The other thing, um, get some leathery spec hits on this wing. We've, we've seen that in some of the other ones. It really, really helps sell the, the uh, I don't want to say his creepiness, but like his battiness about him. So I would just push some, some of this warm light into the wing here as, as like a, a, a rough specular bump. But like just great stuff overall. Love this, like love the rim light we're getting on these to get them to, uh, to read. The shaping on the barrels is uh, like on both sides is actually really well done. You've got a good sense of depth, warm and cool, uh, warm light and cool light. Um, and I think you saw with all the comments, uh, you know, like the oohs and the wows in the in the comment section that you're onto something good here. So really, really cool stuff. Um, yeah, really liking this one. All right, Danny. Danny, you asked a great question. So Danny's question was, it was basically like, you know, I've got this shot. I want to increase the, the, the intensity of the sun. I want to add some depth of field uh, and I want to add a lens flare. How do I know what to do in the um, comp and what do I need to do in the, in the, in the lighting? <clears throat> so depth of field, lens flare, those kinds of lens optics, I usually do those in, in the comp. You can certainly do um, render depth of field. Uh, it looks better in most cases. But it's uh, it's it, it can be a real killer to your to your workflow. So depending if you have time, if it's like a personal project, um, you can bake it into the render. The problem that I have with that is like, if you want to tweak it, you have to do a total re-render. Um, all of you, your layers need to be have that same depth of field applied to it, and and it just adds a lot of render calculation, um, and it kind of handcuffs you and what you're able to do after the fact. So I usually do it in the post. Um, so, 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 but like that comes with experience. That comes with like me working in these tools for a long time and knowing how I want to do one thing versus something else. The one thing that you always want to do though is, is try and get the light, like the actual lighting as far along as you can in the render because um, especially in modern day renders with all these secondary light bounces and stuff, you want to push that because the more you affect the actual lighting of the, of the shot, be it color, value, in the comp, um, the more you're kind of breaking the physics of it. So if like, if I'm just, if I take this and you know, like I crank up the, the, the intensity of the sun by just doing that, that's all well and good, but I'm losing the secondary effects that happen when the sun is that bright, right? So if, if I increase the intensity of something like this, there's a lot of energy coming off the ground on these secondary light rays. So actually what would happen is like, these areas in the foreground would get filled in a lot more and like this area this would be filled in a lot more and you know these shadows these shadows here wouldn't be as dark um but since i uh since i didn't give the light the the light rays that initial energy in the render you're not going to see those in, in in the render if that makes sense um so i i usually like to do uh get as far as i can in the renderer with, with, with the light quality, um, and then know that any sort of optical effects or secondary effects I'm gonna do in the comp. Um, and, then, and then you can also like in, at the end, like kind of tweak some little things here. Um, and you also, oh, you also talked about RGB, um, RGB stuff. Actually, let me stop sharing, stop sharing and reshare my screen for a second so you can see everything. Okay. So, uh, in, let's see, oh, so in the uh, lighting and animated film course, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, I have a video explaining how I set up some RGB passes on a character. And you can use that uh, for your scene as well. So you can see, um, 
the final result. So I, I, the example I give is uh, creating RGB in the eye, separating the iris sclera and pupil. Um, but you can, uh, but you can use it for for any objects as well. Uh, you can. It's certainly if you have crypto mats, and the crypto mats give you what you need. Uh, I would just stick with that uh, because this is basically going to. This is basically what I did before crypto mats existed, or like in the case of that eye, um, or if there's a situation where you know it, the objects actually aren't different, so crypto mat doesn't actually pick up the. They, they it can only read it as one thing. Um, okay, let me stop this and just go back to sharing my other screen. Actually, I can just hop back over here. Uh, okay, so that's that. And Danny, we've got okay. And then for this shot, looking great. Just pull a little bit more pink out of the eyes, just a little bit more. And then I would call this one done. Um, let's do it this. Oh, not that. Not because um, it's just it's just feeling a little alien to have that much pink in the eye. Just to saturate that just a touch. And if you have a crypto mat there, pull it, pull it out using that. And I think that'll help. Or just like go into the shader and just take that down just a little bit. But good stuff there. Again, love this setup. Uh, love where this is heading. I like I really like the the cool versus warm that you've done. Um, I think we can go out of focus on this background. I also think, well, two things. One, I think we can go out of focus back here. Two, I'm wondering if it would benefit us to pivot the camera around this way a little bit. So it's more like, like we basically this, this distance gap here is, it might be more dynamic if they were closer together. So by shifting the camera over to the right, you're able to kind of like fix that parallax a little bit. Um, in terms of the lighting on the character, there's a light shining down here, bouncing up on him, warm light coming in here. I want to feel more warm light around here, both on the tentacles and on his head. And I want to make sure that the light is blocked here so that like the stuff underneath here is in shadow. That'll create more shaping on these tentacles coming up this way. Um, and I think that will help out a lot. I'm wondering. I want to push up the brightness on the table as a whole. I think I think you can push push that light value further. Make it a little more dramatic. And um, and then, uh, yeah, a little more glow up there. Just like a little bit more intensity on that light shining down there because you really want that to be brighter than what's back here. Uh, so shifting that around and then throwing that out of focus. Um, yeah, I think, I think that'll be a good next step for you. The volumetric light, uh, it's a little hazy right now. I, I would almost, maybe isolated just so like so the the haze kind of stops a little higher so that it's just kind of murking up this whole situation down here so maybe just kind of keep it up there um and that'll be good clever great stuff continuing along well with your um uh with this setup i would i would actually consider making this a warmer tone uh than greener uh, just because you can again you can make this whole area pop in here uh with the warmer tones um and then with the background yeah that's pretty good i was thinking it might be too flat back there or like planning but that, i think that'll actually work because otherwise it would just be too busy um you've got a lot of leading line stuff that's kind of like this going back here with the light like i'm wondering if we, we should be cognizant of that and figuring out a way instead of sending all this energy out this way to actually kind of center it in. Um, maybe it'd be a matter of just darkening a little bit there and then darkening a little bit here to kind of focus the area in the middle there. But really good stuff. Uh, and last up, we have Ashley. Ashley, we've got two submissions here. So check out this one first. 
Um, really pretty. The, the light here is feeling a little bit on the pink side. It'd be good to go a little bit more orangey and less pink. And then additionally with this, what's happening is uh, the light is kind of shining upward at her. And, uh, and I think that that would, um, I think, I think, I think you should go with that a little bit more because your shaping is good. It's really, really strong, but it, this feels like it's coming top down. Give it a try of coming up more upward at her um, because this is just like the mood of this scene. Um, yeah, just give that a try. But I think, I mean, like, but overall your, your, your basic uh, shaping, um, all that stuff is coming to, and coming along well. It's a, it's a little bit frontal. I would like to see a little bit more fall off from left to right across this, but, but the structure is there. Uh, for this one, um, we are coming together well. So I just think there needs to be a lot more light on the, uh, like, on the octopus uh, herself or himself. Um, I think that, I guess this is, this is real crude, but I may have lost audio here. Let me check this real quick. Okay, hopefully you guys can still hear me. <laughs> um, so I would just increase this and make this brighter overall. That's, that's, actually, let me do that. Yeah, so just, just taking this down in the background here, but like really kind of feeling the glow of this up around the, um, the octopus. And just like, like, I think we just push it stronger because right now um, it's just his darkness is blending in with, with the background's darkness and I want to isolate uh, what's happening here in the foreground with just like this, this fun, like make it almost like a, um, uh, like a, like a dance club blue magenta light, just kind of bouncing up. Cause you, and then just eliminating some of the, like, this is a big dark shape in here, just kind of eliminating that and hitting up some of the rims and stuff would be really, really great. Um, so yeah, so I think, I think that's, I think that's where we are right now. I think I got everyone's questions, but like I said, if you have anything else, just make sure you throw it. Um, uh, you know, throw it in the, let's see, in the, in the questions, in the comments down below. Uh, I will take a look. And like I said, there was a bunch of submissions today. If I missed anyone, please let me know. Uh, you guys are rad. Uh, you're doing incredible work and it's inspiring and it's just fun to work with you each and every day. Jordan also asked me, uh, how much is too much to post? Just keep posting. I love this stuff. I, I get, this is why I like getting up in the morning. I will go until my voice is shot. So, um, so yeah, so we're all good there. So keep posting and I will talk to you guys all very soon. All right. Happy lighting, everybody.